Hello, and what I'm going to talk about now in this particular session is the cone of uncertainty. Uh, and what this is actually related to is understanding how little we know at the beginning of the project or may know at the beginning of the project and therefore uncertain on really how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost, for example, uh, because we don't know a massive amount of detail or look at the relationship between that and the detail. Remember, one of the five characteristics of projects is uncertainty. And remember, we use the word project for a reason, because we're projecting ourselves into the future in the sense of what we want to see at the end and also how we think we're going to get there. Right. Like I say, in some other examples, we look at, say, sailing from one port across a body of water to another port. Now we know where we're going to go to and we're projecting that, that destination. However, of course, you know, sailing is subject to traffic on the water, the currents and the tides, for example, and also the weather. And obviously you as the sailor and the people on the board boat with you, because, you know, if you're in good health and good, good spirits, that might be quite good. If somebody falls sick, you've got to change plan. You now, if the weather changes, you have to change plan. Same thing. So there's an uncertainty about it, right? But at the same time, we have an uncertainty on how the solution is actually going to evolve as we build it, because the business may change their minds for all sorts of reasons, a little bit or quite a lot from a point of view of what they're getting and also what they're going to end up with, or even about the whole project altogether. So I've drawn this diagram up to give an idea initially to help us look at what we mean by uncertainty from a point of view of the project itself and scope. And we talk about scope at a high level in another session. Because really, at the end of the day, that's what we deliver. We need to understand what that scope is, know what it's about, and therefore what we're actually going to build throughout the project. So um, what I'm going to do is divide this cone up into three main areas, like this. So I'm going to call them phases. So this is phase one, phase two, and phase three. Three. But really what is happening in phase one, of course, is this is where we get the high level view of the project. This is the very first phase we come to, right? Uh, whether you call it starting up, feasibility, um, initiation, uh, requirements, uh, preparing, whatever it happens to be, whatever terminology you use for that particular phase. What we're doing here is really collating the information from the terms of reference or whatever is kicked off the project, formalizing that to get a good understanding at high level right? At high level. So remember that, because what we have up here in the top half of this graph is the effort, right? So what this cone is going to help us with is understand the effort against the requirements we have. Now, what it now starts to explain, which is really the core of what we're going to look at now, is understanding about something why we estimate, right? Again, going back to the fact that we're projecting ourselves into the future and it's a bit uncertain, we don't know what we're going to be doing to, to that depth. We never do. Even when we're going through the phase two and we're designing it, putting it together, it's only as we see it, that project is as we see it, the scope, at that moment in time. Right? So we can only really estimate how long it's likely to take and how much it's going to cost, therefore, because there's the linkage. Time is money. Right? Resources, people, environments, etc. So we need to understand that. Now, at the beginning, we know very little about the project, as you're going to see. And as we break down and understand a lot more about the products and the, or the requirements, or as we turn them into requirements through prioritizing, then we get a bit more detail. But we still really don't know actually how long it's going to take. But we have to have some idea, remember, because we need to have a reasonable understanding so the business can see whether it's worth the investment or not. So we need to give them some relevance as to how that is. So the point is, that in the business case, we will get the budget that they have for the project, right? Or at least what they've allocated at this point in time, and any time scales. Now, those time scales may well be locked in. So we've got to work out what can we actually do within that time frame, right? And therefore link to that time frame and understand how much it's likely to be for the money we may need. So with the figures we're going to look at is looking at the costs of running the project, not the budget. The budget is what the business have allocated. Right. So these things we discuss in other sessions, right? So in phase one, I know very little about the project. And what I'll do is I'll draw that up on the board up here, right? All we've got is what they're going to deliver at the end of the project. 
right? So say a new policy document, well, a new application form, right? So this is a new, say, passport application form. And linked to that will be, you know, a set of major headings within the document. So we'll have one for the form itself, okay? We'll have a section that will have help, tips, etc. There'll be one for legal, T's and C's, for instance, and, you know, who can use the document. These are just uh, general headings, just to give you an idea. And this will actually be in phase one. That's all we're going to know at the beginning of the project. So these are very broad subject areas. Therefore, what's happening here, this requirement section is showing the size of the requirement. So very broad size. Now, if something's very broad, our accuracy in estimating is also going to be broad. So I put here, effort here is a time cost frame, right? So again, it's very broad because obviously the time frame for the project is going this way, right? So in that respect, uh, what we're saying here is that in phase one, our understanding of the requirements is like one to 10 requirements, right? One to 10, between one to 10, in this case, I've only got five or six, really. But so the main, main result is that made up of five pages. It could be 10 sections. It could be whatever it happens to be. A website might have more pages, for example. Right? A building might have a lot more sections. Like, for instance, I may have 10 floors. And you may be, you know, subdividing them into different functionalities. Okay. So I've got one to 10 requirements here. Okay. Therefore, my time could be very broad. It could be, say, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, time 12 to 18 months, and my cost estimated at say 25 to 30,000 pounds or whatever you know currency you're using. Okay, so our time and cost equals the effort here. So it's very broad, it's a very broad understanding because I don't really know that much more at the moment, and that's why we've got this slanting curve. It's very flat here, all right? It may break down a little bit here, but probably more towards the next phase, as you'll see, all right? So that's how we start, a very broad understanding. At this moment in time, what we're really trying to do is understand, can we build it to the time and to the budget, and therefore what's the time and the cost likely to be around that budget, and therefore do we have any time constraints? Because remember, we're asking the supplier, the people gonna build this for us, can they fit it in that time frame? You know, as well as the quality and all the other aspects, but this is one key area, right? Based on small amount of information. Now. If I draw this graph slightly differently, um, what we could do is look at the number requirements like this, and it will sort of do this sort of thing. And as they break down, it does the opposite, really. So it's the inverse. So this one looks at the number of requirements we have, right? So at the beginning, we have a very small number of requirements, 1 to 10, right? So really, that ought to be over there, but you'll love it. So as we go through the, re the, the project, the requirements break down even further, we get a bit bigger number. Um, and that's what we're going to do in phase two. Right? So we've got a very broad estimation here just to see if this thing's gonna fit somehow with what the people gonna build it for us can do in the time and the budget that they've sort of uh, been asked to work with right? and get an understanding, see how that fits in. Does it look like we can actually get somewhere with this? Uh, and if that's the case, then we go into phase two and we start to break down the requirements. Remember, now what we do, we break these down into a lot smaller uh, detail because the smaller the detail, i.e. break the requirements down so the number grows, but the requirements themselves in size get smaller. The smaller they are, the more accurate we can be for estimating. But remember, it's still only estimating. Now, yes, at the end of this phase, we've got to agree the delivery plan, which may be a fixed time and therefore a fixed cost at that point in time, right? Um, but that's to say, yes, look, within that time frame, this is what we can actually build. So there's going to be a, an agreement between how much scope and therefore how many requirements, what requirements we can build within that time frame and agree that, or if the business can change that to fit around what the, what the supplier needs. So again, it's going through that iterative process in here. And that's what we're going to do a lot of. And in the session, we talk about this in more detail. When we look at this second phase, the design, what you call initiating, uh, planning. It's planning, really. That's what we're really doing there. Uh, foundations, whatever, whatever you want to label it as, the activities are still pretty well much the same. 
for breaking out and saying a lot more how we're going to manage, develop the solution itself, and then signing off to get on with the project. Really, we're building the delivery plan, how we're going to get there. Okay, so during the second phase here, phase two, what we're going to do now is break the requirements down to get them smaller, or the products get them smaller. That allows you to be a bit more accurate on the estimation. So our time now, hopefully, will say between 15 to 17 months. Yep. Hopefully. Now, sometimes that might actually slide outside that boundary. What is more interesting is where does that fit with the business case understanding from a time frame point of view? And the costs might well end up being, so let's say, between 28 and 30,000. OK, in this case. OK, so now we're getting a smaller range. OK, I mean, the broad range here really should be, should be 50, I should say, actually and here between 28 and 30. So the range is getting a lot smaller. The key thing here is the range is very broad here. The range in here is a lot smaller, right? Now, that depends on a lot of things, of course. It depends on the understanding of the solution. It depends on the, uh, on the skills and the knowledge and the experience of the team doing the builds and the business providing the information on that, right? Looks about the riskiness of, this, of the solution itself. Um, and how long you're going to run this for. So all these things can take into consideration because a very skilled set of people and understanding a lot more of the solution itself might mean that these ranges are a lot smaller to start with. Just put them very broad to get a reasonable understanding. It could be a lot smaller to start with. Okay, so bear that in mind. This could be anything from like 12 to 24 and 25 to 50. And therefore, this will be a smaller range on that. So that's what you're trying to remember. It's a much smaller range. Okay. Um, and therefore, obviously, our requirements at this point are going to be 10 to 100 or more or roughly. Remember, it's a guidance. It gives you a relevance, a, rel a relativity here. Right? The number of requirements just depends on how much you need to break down. But remember, guidance here, don't break everything down to the smallest detail. You don't need all that detail right now. What you're really looking for in this case is looking at the delivery plan here. And looking at the detail, really, in this first section, the first set of increments and time boxes in the first part of the project, because that's what you're going to kick off next. What happens further down the track is less of interest right now. I mean, if it's a six-week project, you might be more interested. If it's a six-month or even a six-year project, then the further down towards the end of the other end of the six years, the less likely you are to be concerned. You might not get that far, right? And the scope may well change. So let's just get the detail here. As long as the business have enough confidence and understanding about how much it's likely to cost, can we fit it in? What's the main scope we've got here? And that's why we prioritize that we can kick that off. Right. And then finally, um, what we're doing here is when we finally get into phase three and start evolving, developing, building the solution. And we're going to using techniques like time boxes or work packages. Right. Doesn't matter which combination of the two. When we come into here, this is the estimate we've picked up at the beginning. This is the estimate we've worked out here per requirement now. But I need all that at that detail to be able to build the full delivery plan picture. Right. And it's only when I come out of the time box do I actually, <laughs> do I actually, do I have the actuals of how long it's taking to do the requirement, right? We'll talk about estimating measurements in another session, right? So bear this in mind. Estimate going in, three days for that requirement, four for that, two for that, five for that, whatever it happens to be. That's my time box or work package. When I've done the work, now, long, now I know how long it is actually taking me. Right. Now, that's obviously useful in, when you go through the retrospectives or reviews at the end of the time boxes, work packages for the subsequent uh, set of uh, time frames that you're going to run the builds in. Because this allows you to, can I adjust? But you've got to bear that in mind What's caused the change in that particular uh, set of work requirements in that time frame? Are they relevant to other time frames or is it just specific around that one and those specific requirements, that particular team? So just look at that. How have I measured? What estimates have I used? How accurate have they been? Right. And that helps you to understand that. Do I need that? Is it relevant to subsequent time frames, box, time boxes or work packages? So bear that in mind. I only know the actual once. I come out of the time box or the work package, all right? And that can be useful. It's estimating all the way along because this is what the uncertainty means. 
as we get through the project and become a lot more certain how it's building, how it's working, how our estimations have worked and our measurements have worked on making sure we've got the right estimations, that's why the graph flattens out and therefore we get to a lot more even uh, level here, right? And so as we go through the project, it should stabilize a lot. Code of uncertainty helps you understand why we estimate, but understands how the number of requirements grow. And as they grow and get smaller, more accuracy on understanding the time and the cost. But please do estimate. Right? I know people want fixed time and cost. Well, technically, we do that with the delivery plan. But what we're saying is, look, we don't know for certain how long it's going to build. However, because we've prioritized and we've now got contingency in the scope, we can use that to control the time and therefore the cost for the rest of the project if that has to be the case.